So this is the flip side of the device to cloud talk. Um, in this one, we're going to talk about sending messages from the cloud to a device, right? And we're going to do this with Azure IoT Hub. And um, I'm going to use, um, what do you call it? The Oh, you can't see it. I'm going to use one of these uh, M5 stack devices. And we're going to do this in Python. And in this case, because I'm lazy, I'm going to do this with uh, the UI flow and basically the kind of the Google MIT style blocky version of this. And so the first thing I was going to talk about is uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create messages in Azure and we're going to send them to the device. And in this case, it's just going to be a simple, um, hey, a hello message. We're not going to run any servos or anything. Uh, this is a zero extra hardware kind of thing. Um, so the UI for this is going to be pretty simple on the screen of this. There's a label at the top, last message received. Whatever we receive from Azure is actually going to show up in this field here. This text will be replaced by that. And then I typically like having a time updated so that I know the device is alive. Although in this case, I did some LEDs for that too. So this word says, I wish I had more time will actually be the current time, right? And actually that's shown in a couple other videos. Um, the, so what I'm going to do here is let's hide the UI for that, the screen interface for that. And let's look at the program we're going to do. So in this case, uh, I actually am programming this over USB here. So as you can see, this device is connected. Um, if I hit the refresh button here, it'll automatically refresh it. Uh, the, so because this is connected by USB, I actually have a line above this that uh, will set the current Wi-Fi connection. If we were doing OTA, the OTA device would already be on the Wi-Fi and we wouldn't have to do that. So there's a setup line above this and then the uh, Wi-Fi connection. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to always tend to set the NTP, the, do a network time protocol, uh, setting of the clock on this. In theory, it wouldn't be necessary if the device is clocked as an RTC, which this one is, but I do it anyway. Uh, I set the time zone to minus four here. This should actually be a zero probably so that we run on UTC. Um, but I was lazy and didn't want to have to reformat the time. So in this case, we boot the time protocol. We set the current time field which was this one here. I wish I had more time. And um, and then we set the first RGB LED. So this device actually has five LEDs on each side. I tend to do a status of that. So on one side, we're going to have, when we boot up, we're going to set an LED. Then we're going to connect to the Azure IoT Hub. This is using the primary connection string, in this case, from the device itself. And then we're going to start the Azure connection. This actually will cause a long delay between well, LED 1 and LED 2 showing up. And then I always do this with a device. I So with D, with there are three ways to set data on the device and three ways to send data from the device to Azure. And whenever I boot up, I set the twin data to show um, the last time this device booted up and connected. And then I set LED 3. So typically what will happen is you'll see LED 1. You'll stand there for sit there for a long period of time. And then you'll uh, see the other LEDs pop up. And then the main program for here, all it does is it the fifth LED on that row. So it'll be one, two, three. Then there'll be a blank one. And then the fifth one flashes every two seconds to tell you the program's still running. And every two seconds, it'll update the time field. So that's all the initialization and just am I alive heartbeat kind of stuff. And then the real program is all this event thing. So this is actually I thought was really cool. We're just going to. If you look at the Azure pieces, um, there's two subscribe. There's a couple subscribes here. <clears throat> you can subscribe for twin changes. You can subscribe for direct methods, which actually return a status. So a lot of the demos use that. So like if I wanted to turn a motor on and acknowledge that it had been turned on, that's probably what you would want to use. If you're just doing broadcast messages where you don't need a response, then you can just do a regular C to D, which is actually what we're going to do here. And then so in the subscribe C to D, it's actually going to fill this variable. And we just take that now a lot of the other demo I did, this was actually uh, JSON. And so we had to parse the JSON and pull out a field. I was too lazy to do that here. I want this code to be as simple as possible. Um, and so we just take that message and we put it in the text field. And then we increment a loop. And then what all it does is it flashes an LED, changes an LED color based on every message. It changes the LED color. I probably could have done them like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. But I didn't. So in this case, we'll just flash from yellow 
to red on the last LED on the left hand side of the device uh, and yellow to red and red to yellow every time a message is received. And that's it. So uh, maybe I could have just had it. Well, anyway, there's other ways to do this that would have been simpler. So that's the whole program. So uh, it's a little hard to capture on the webcam. Oh, and then when you want to run it, you just hit the run button. And you can see the code's been executed successfully. All right, so if we were to go to the hub, um, we have my IoT hub is called the M5 Stack Hub. And we can see here that there was some traffic on this uh, yesterday, right? Um, number of messages used. There's other stats in here, like number of connected devices, which is only one, which makes sense. And, you know, that's kind of the end of that. All right, and then if we go to the devices, uh, so I've been playing with mine, and so, you know, there's some trash still in here. All right, so the connection string we used in the app was this one here. <clears throat> and I didn't have to do any renewable SAS tokens. I'm not really sure why that is. Probably the way I configured the device. Um, so again, here we can send a message to the device. We can use a direct method to get a reply back. I just wanted to show you the twin real quick. So you can see here, I've been playing with what I want this field to be. I think I called it uh, last initiated contact at, and it's actually the third today. And so this is the message that comes up whenever this particular program, uh, it adds it to the twins, right? So if I go back to my device, um, I want to send a message to the device. This is device one. I can send anything I want. Uh, there's some properties you can send. I There's no way in the M5, in the kind of Python thing to pick that up. So all you got to do is hit hello and uh, message sent, and that's it. And uh, I don't think you can see it, but basically uh, it says hello. And the only other thing here is like this yellow light on this side. If I were to send another message, um, it should change the color, right? I guess I should see that. Yeah. And, uh, and then we have the heartbeat running on the other side, right? Every two seconds. And that's it. So I hope that was useful and that you get to use or get a chance to play with this because it's pretty cool, actually. Have a great day.